welcome back to the Dreamcast. I am your host, Denise Walsh. I combine science, scripture, and stories that will inspire you to dive deep, break through your own personal glass ceiling, and design a life of your dreams. Welcome back to the Dreamcast. In today's solo episode, we are going to talk about what science and scripture have to say about gratitude. Now, before you tune me out and think this is just some fluffy psychology stuff, please know that this was probably the topic that blew my mind the most. When I realized that science is confirming what scripture has taught us all along, I knew we were up to something amazing. Now, the Bible all over the place has verses and stories about living in a state of gratitude. First Chronicles says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love endures forever. Philippians says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And first Timothy says, for everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with gratitude. You hear story after story after story with the idea and premise that living in a state of love is optimal, right? That is what the Lord challenges us to do all of the time. But as we hear that and we read it and we we experience that, are we really taking it to heart? Well, science is now confirming that there's a reason behind this teaching. The branch of physics known as quantum physics sheds light on this. Quantum physics and classical physics are not the same. So the father of classical physics is Sir Isaac Newton. And the discipline he initiated deals with certainty. So basically what we can physically see and experience. For example, if I throw a rock into a pond, I can predict the size of the ripples based on the weight of the rock and the speed at which it travels. Classical physicists see matter and energy as existing separately, so that the rock and the energy I used to throw the rock are separate. Whereas quantum physics explores what is uncertain, even with scientific observation, and theorizes that energy and matter are less distinct and more connected than traditionally thought. Powerful magnification tools reveal, for example, that the atom is not solid. It's actually a tiny force field of energy created by smaller particles spinning at incredible rates of speed. Matter is made of atoms. Atoms are a force field of energy. And the energy created by the single atom works with the energy created by millions, billions, or trillions of other atoms to produce the physical world we see. Interesting. So let's think about how this applies to us. Think about the person you are right now and the person you are becoming. Every particle of your being has the potential to produce more and to renew itself. And in this dynamic setting, every moment becomes an opportunity. Every interaction offers something new because the energy can change. You can direct your energy, including your thoughts, in any direction you choose. Your selected thoughts produce corresponding actions, which you view as either negative or positive. So we have the ability to impact the energy that is coming from the atoms within us. And that energy puts out kind of like a radio tower. It transmits that energy out into the world. So think about this. What do you suppose is the most powerful form of thought energy? Is it anger, determination, problem solving? The Bible speaks of the power of love, saying, now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. In terms of the thought life, love takes on many forms. In terms of transforming us, I believe that gratitude is love's most powerful manifestation. When we are feeling truly thankful, the energy that love produces fills up inside 
you can think of a person who walks into a room and they just radiate. Everybody becomes better because they walk in. You can think of a person who's grouchy and in the dumps and they walk into a room and the whole feeling of the room goes down. That is very simply, in simple terms, what we're talking about today. And because like attracts like, we know that when somebody is giving off the attitude, the energy of gratitude, that is what they see in the world. So there's two reasons why this works. The first one is the energetic emotions that we put out into the world based on our health, our thought pattern, our view of the world, our view of self, all of that impacts the energy levels that we give off into the world, which then impacts the energy that we get back into the world, just as like attracts like. The second thing is that, as we've said before, you become what you think about. And you think about the way that our thought process not only radiates, like a radio tower transmits our thoughts out into the world energetically, it also impacts our reticular activating system. So a reticular activating system basically acts as a filter for all five senses. And our mind is constantly processing about 2 million bits of information a second. Now, our mind would be overloaded with information if we could take it all in at the same time, but, but we can't. And that's why we have the reticular activating system to help filter for us. So it regulates a bulk of the information perceived by our senses. And how does it decide what's important? It decides what's important based on what we are currently thinking about and the energy that we are currently experiencing. The state of gratitude is more than just thinking nice thoughts and being grateful for what you have. It's really taking it to heart and connecting emotionally, energetically to the space of love, the space of thanksgiving, the space of gratitude. Because like attracts like, we are broadcasting our emotions out into the world. And that is absolutely what we will get back. And through the reticular activating system, it's no, like it's a no brainer. You become what you think about because the filtering system filters out the things that do not, that does not believe is relevant for you. So it's going to filter in the things that you, it believes you want to see, which is connected to your thoughts and your emotions. So with that in mind, let's take a look at some research. Two psychologists, Dr. Robert A. Emmons of the University of California and Dr. Michael Mag of the University of Miami have done much of the research on gratitude. And in this 2003 study, they asked all participants to write a few sentences each week focusing on particular topics. One group wrote about things they were grateful for that had occurred during the week. The second group wrote about daily irritations or things that displeased them. And the third wrote about events that had, that had affected them with no emphasis on them being positive or negative. After 10 weeks, those who wrote about gratitude were more optimistic and felt better about their lives. Surprisingly, they also exercised more, had fewer visits to the physician's office than those who focused on sources of aggravation. Another leading researcher in this field is Dr. Martin E.P. Seligman, a psychologist at the University of Pennsylvania, and he tested the impact of positive psychology interventions on 411 people, each compared with a control assignment of writing about early memories. So when their week's assignment was to write and personally deliver a letter of gratitude to someone who had never been properly thanked for his or her kindness, participants immediately immediately exhibited a huge increase in happiness scores. This impact was greater than any other intervention with benefits lasting for a month. 
Other studies have looked at how gratitude can improve relationships. For example, a study of couples found that individuals who took time to express gratitude for their partner not only felt more positive towards the other person, but felt more comfortable expressing concerns about their relationship. Expressing gratitude and living in a state of gratitude, meaning you're emoting, you're transmitting love and gratitude out into the world is not just for fun. (laughs) It absolutely impacts your quality of life, the quality of your relationships and what you experience on a daily basis. Pam Grout the author of Thank and Grow Rich, a 30-day experiment in shameless gratitude and unabashed joy, tells us that thanking rather than thinking puts us on an energetic frequency, a vibration that calls in miracles. Science has proven that when we observe the world from a place of gratitude, when we put our attention in a spot of beauty and gaze at wonder, we develop the capacity to radically rev up our day-to-day experience. Pam challenges us in the book, Thank and Grow Rich, to practice extreme gratitude, extreme, like whole nother level gratitude for 30 days and to notice the effect it has on all aspects of of our lives. So let's think about what are some ways we can cultivate gratitude on a daily basis. First, write a thank you note. Here's an idea. Just like in the study, you can express gratitude to someone else. You can make yourself happier and nurture relationships by writing a person a thank you letter, a thank you text, a thank you message. Sending out love to others will not just improve the quality of the relationship, but it will put you up a few notches on your uh, gratitude energy states. You could thank someone mentally. No time to write? Well, think about who you are grateful for. Now, I do have to say that I do this most mornings where I think about what I'm grateful for, um, but there is something about sending a message and being loud about that and putting that love out into the world that really does take it up a notch. Keep a gratitude journal and make a habit of writing down or sharing with loved ones thoughts about the gifts you received each day. You can think about dinner time with your kids. What are some things that went well today? What are you grateful for today? What do you love about today? What was your favorite part about today? A conversation about what we love about our life not only creates a a habit within us, but a habit within our children as well. Count your blessings. Pick a time each week to sit down and write about your blessings, reflecting on what went right, what you're grateful for. And again, teach this skill to your kids. Prayer meditation puts us in a state where we can um, listen and experience such inner peace where we have the ability to allow love to bubble up. It's a great place to spend time if you need to forgive or you have bitterness and resentment. Prayer and meditation can be an amazing space for healing. Positive thinking isn't just a good habit. It's a healthy one. And science confirms that the Bible says giving thanks in everything and all things is not just going to impact our relationships. It's not just going to impact our quality of life. It's going to impact our full experience here on earth. So if you take a look at yourself and you think of a radio tower with love being at the top, what are you broadcasting to the world? What energy is coming from you and your atoms And how can you change it and increase the amount of love and gratitude you experience on a daily basis? I challenge us all to have this unabashed joy, this like crazy over the top, shameless gratitude and express it for 30 days and notice the effects it has on all of our lives. Have an amazing day and remember to dream big. 
Thank you so much for listening today. Head over to denisewalsh.com. Enter your email to subscribe to our list and I'll be sending out an early bird special coupon. 50% off, in fact, of the Dream Life Workbook when it is launched in just a few months. So if you want to have first dibs, let's get your name on that list. Thanks again. I so appreciate you and remember to dream big.